and welcome. My name is Tara Stevenson and I serve as the Dean of Student Engagement and Career Development here at Flagler College. I am so excited to kick off our Saints weekend. It's our family weekend where we typically get to engage our parents, family members, friends of Flagler with what's happening on campus. And obviously things are much more different now. Um, I would love to host you all and we're having wonderful Florida fall weather here. And so it would be nice to have you on campus, but I am honored that you've chosen to start Saints Weekend with us virtually. And we'll hopefully see you throughout a few different sessions. But this kickoff session is a chance for you to meet our president as well as a few members from our President's Leadership Council, parents of a Flagler student, um, ask any questions that you have and we'll kind of chat about what it's like to be here at Flagler with your student, but then also what it's like to be a parent of a Flagler student. We are recording this session, so you'll definitely be able to view it if we talk about something really good and yeah. you wanna dive back into it. And then if you do have any questions at any point, please toss them into the Q&A and I'll be monitoring it and we can answer them live if we have time. Um, also, I do want to make sure that you're aware we have our full schedule of events for the rest of today, as well as tomorrow on our website, flagler.edu slash Saints Weekend. And all the links are on there if you want to go ahead and add something to your schedule. But first, I'd like to introduce all of our speakers to you. And so first, we have Dr. Joseph Joyner, who serves as our president of Flagler College. And then we have Mrs. Susan Joyner, who is Dr. Joyner's wife. We have Bill Picard, who serves as the chair of the Flagler College Parents Leadership Council. And then we have Mrs. Lisa Picard, our class of 1992 alumni, as well as a member of the alumni board. And both Lisa and Bill are parents of Cassandra, who is a junior coastal environmental science major here at Flagler. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a few different questions for everybody, but this is supposed to be very, very laid back. It's called Java with the Joiners. And so if you have a cup, let me see if anybody else has got it. There we go. I think Lisa's got a wonderful Flagler one. Um, please absolutely <laughs> join us in it. Um, but first, I'd love to start with you, Dr. Joiner. Um, could you provide a, a general update for our viewers just on Flagler, maybe What's going on with our student body right now? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to, um, to you for putting this, this virtual Saints weekend together and your entire team. And I know you get lots of help, but uh, thank you for organizing this. And uh, it's great to be able to do it and do it differently. And, and uh, certainly glad that we're, we're able to, to, to have a Saints weekend, a different Saints weekend. So I just want to thank you all for that. And before I get started, I'll, I'll give some updates that probably a lot of you know. I'm going to share some, a little bit of new information today, but I just want to say how incredibly proud I am of our students um, and our faculty and our staff. You know, I've been um, just uh, been out and about and just watching our students go to and fro classes, to and from classes and uh, popping in classrooms and uh, they have really been troopers, and I'm just so very proud of them, uh, keeping each other safe, and, and uh, it really has uh, done my heart good to see uh, the Flagger family come together. It's just been kind of amazing, but um, just kind of a general update uh, about our fall. Our current enrollment, enrollment is uh, 2275. Our enrollment team really did a really good job of, of, um, um, of, of getting a good, good class in and good numbers in, and we're, we were very proud to see that. We were a little bit worried because at the time, you know, uh, Florida was hot and uh, COVID was hot. And so, uh, but our enrollment team really did a great job. And so uh, we've got 2275, you know, about 55% of those students are from Florida and the rest are from um, um, uh, 38 other states and uh, 11 foreign countries. And so we've got a, a lot of diversity, both, um, uh, in, in the country and out of the country as, as we always do. Um, you know, about 40% of our students are living on campus right now. And, um, you know, this is something interesting and very unique that I just wanted to share. Um, and I think it's an important concept for Flagger and what Flagger is, but 87% of our students are taking face-to-face -face classes. Now that is very unique. If you look at other schools, other colleges, especially the large 
state universities and other places, some of them have gone completely online. Um, at the very beginning, we, we polled our students and I think about 90% of them wanted to have face-to-face -face classes and that, that really spoke to me and, and uh, that's, that's really what the Flagger experience is about. So having 80% of our uh, students doing face-to-face uh, -face class is really encouraging. And of course, um, as the spring comes, we want to really try to improve that. Uh, this incoming class is really uh, a sharp group of young men and young women too. Their average SAT score, I think, is 1130, uh, which is really, we've got a really, really bright group. Congratulations to you parents at home uh, for bringing, and students for bringing us such a, a wonderful incoming class. So uh, I love our freshmen. I love our transfers, our new students. Uh, talk to them all the time and they're just a, a, a great group. Uh, just a little update on coronavirus. Um, uh, if you don't already know, and I'm probably you've got more information from us than you want, but it, that, that is all my fault. I told our team to over communicate and uh, because there were just so many questions. And so um, you can go to www.flagler.edu backslash coronavirus. We update that that up that uh, website almost daily. And so there's a lot of great information. Uh, we're also very transparent about what's happening here on campus. And so we're working to make that information easier to find on our website. Um, do wanna say, and um, everybody knock on wood, uh, we've got, we're currently tracking zero, zero, that's a zero, active cases on campus. Uh, no staff, no off-campus students, no on-campus students. So. Um, uh, we're currently tracking zero, and we have been tracking zero for, I think, since uh, probably September 20th. So um, that's, that's really good news. And again, I just want to say how proud I am of our students for, you know, you read all these stories about what's happening in other places and big parties and uh, not really behaving responsibly. Our students have been just terrific. I mean, um, they have gone overboard to keep each other safe. And I just, I think that's why we are where we are you know, uh, with zero active cases because um, they've done such a good job. And of course, we, we've got a great team here uh, put together to sort of handle everything that, that's handled. We have had cases and dealt with them and had to have had quarantines, but we've dealt with them uh, really well. So I'm just, just so proud of, proud of these students. I mean, that's um, the most exciting thing that I've ever seen in my life. We're announcing today and it's not out yet, so you're getting sort of a preview, um, but we, we are uh, converting to what we call level two on Monday, which is a little bit less restrictions uh, on what we do. We're opening up the campus a little bit more. We follow, um, uh, really we follow the guidelines um, that was put together by Johns Hopkins, um, which is open smart, uh, which is really how to open well um, for uh, college campuses. And so it's really the best in class plan for opening campuses safely and it's served our well us well and of course so we're we're going to announce that uh, later today that uh, Monday we'll be moving to our level two and that'll open up a lot more common spaces um, our fitness centers expanding the number of people who can uh, attend events is basically uh, we're still going to do our social distancing we're still going to uh, to have our mass policy in place but we're going to be able to open things up a little bit more um, and our students will love it. I mean, they, they need that, they want that, that's why they come here. And so uh, we're gonna do that as safely and as quickly as we can. Uh, but that's exciting news uh, on where we are. Uh, we did decide to, um, after Thanksgiving, move to online. We only had like a week and a half of classes after Thanksgiving. And I just, I told you, I think we have students from 38 states, 11 foreign countries. And so getting on an airplane and going for, um, uh, three, four, five day Thanksgiving break and coming back, uh, we just felt like it'd be safer just to go ahead and finish our our classes online and do our finals online. I uh, really didn't have a lot of face-to-face -face class time left. Um, I really think that's a smart thing to do and, and um, our, our faculty have been prepared to do that since the summer. So we've been talking about that and uh, of course we announced it last week. Our campus is still gonna be open. Our residence halls are gonna be open. Our dining hall is gonna be open. Uh, all of our facilities are gonna be open. Um, and, and so we're not closing the campus because we don't need to. Actually, we're opening the campus more 
on Monday where um, more offices will be open and, and more activities. But um, we are going to hold the after Thanksgiving. We're going to do the finals week and, and all of that uh, online, which I think is, is, is a, good, is a good, good decision to make. That doesn't affect our commencement. We're still planning on holding commencement December 12th at the amphitheater. We've got uh, plan A, B, C, D, E, and F uh, for our commencement, but really our, 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 our number one plan is to hold it as, as we had planned at the amphitheater. Obviously, we'll have to follow the local guidelines on how that works, uh, and that information will be come, coming out well, but uh, Margo Thomas and her team have been doing a great job preparing for, for our commencement, and um, uh, I'm excited to to, to let that happen because I think other places you've seen that we're going to do a, a, an online uh, or a virtual commencement. And so we're going to, we're going to do our darndest. Uh, these students deserve it. These seniors deserve it. This is their opportunity and uh, we're going to, we're going to make it happen in a safe way. Spring semester uh, schedule and classes. Um, uh, of course, we're going to be returning back face to face. Uh, our plan right now and um, is and what we're working on right now with our scheduling to, is to increase more face-to-face -face classes and reduce the, uh, the hybrid and online classes. We're currently uh, polling our students right now who, who for some medically related release reason uh, do need to stay online uh, for the spring semester, but our, our hope is to open it up to more face-to-face -face classes. Um, <clears throat> that's what our students want when we ask them. They want more face-to-face -face and sort of less hybrid. So we're working on that scheduling right now. Our academic affairs team is doing a great job on that. And so um, our registration uh, is planned for the first week of November for our spring classes. So we're looking, looking forward to moving forward with um, uh, more of that and, and more, more uh, normalcy on the Flagler campus. But I'll tell you, it, it really has been great being here and seeing the students and, and being able to engage with them. A little bit different, but it's been great. And um, again, it's just been, it's been a great fall. It's been a great learning experience, but um, our students have made it all worthwhile. Yeah, it's echoing Dr. Joyner's sentiments there. It's, it's been very kind of re-energizing, I think, for all of us when we get those little interactions with students and whether it's that they're coming to grab a you know, arts and craft kit to go. It's still that quick hello. You know, they're not hanging out necessarily with us, but we still get that engagement, you know, just a little bit differently. Um, we did have a few questions come in real quick that I'd like to touch on um, regarding the Thanksgiving break and winter break. I know that our residence life staff is going to be looking at all the residents to see who's planning to come back here and help us prepare with the numbers that will be going through virtual classes on campus. But do you have any, you know, do you anticipate any sort of number of, of what that will look like that will be coming back on campus? Well, we've had a lot of, of um, deferred spring enrollments, um, you know, students who, who wanted to defer their entry to the spring. And so we're working real hard to make sure that they come. And so uh, we're crossing our fingers to actually have more students come uh, here, more students that want to um, um, uh, be involved in, in, in being our residence life and, and all of that. So uh, we did have a lot of deferrals for the spring. And so we're really hoping that um, that, that comes through and uh, encouraging those students to go ahead and pull the trigger that we're waiting in the fall to go ahead and pull the trigger and come in, and get engaged now. I think it's a perfect opportunity to sort of uh, uh, get the Flagler experience, even if you're a freshman, to sort of, uh, you know, see what it's like here and and uh, we, we, of course, we hope and pray we're able to continue to open things up more and more as we move forward. So um, uh, I'm hoping for a, a good and even stronger spring class based on that information. Yeah, um, our campus will still be open. It's just that our classes have gone virtual. So I know I see another question in there about whether our students will be able to stay on campus in between Absolutely. Thanksgiving and winter break. And yes, Absolutely. I know my team, we're looking still at engagement and activity opportunities because that is a time when we either need some stress relief because finals are right around the corner or we need to take our mind off of some things. Um, so yes, the college is still open. We're not fully closing and all going virtual, but classes will be going virtual. Yeah, it's only, um, only the classes, only the face-to-face -face classes. It, everything else is wide open. Yes, um, and then another question um, that popped in, what would you say like the visitors to the city is looking like? Are you seeing more people 
Are you seeing less visitors? I mean, I know myself, I think I've been seeing less visitors because there's less traffic, <laughs> um, but I know we don't have visitors on campus. So do you have any insight to what visitors to the city are looking like? Well, I think, you know, I'm out there every day. And so it's just kind of slowly growing, I think is what I'm saying. You know, we're back in the summer, it was uh, uh, kind of a ghost town. And then um, we've seen more and more, you know, as, a, as you look at St. George Street as kind of a measure of tourism and what's happening, you see more and more students, uh, more and more visitors come, 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 uh, come to St. Augustine. And I see that every day increasing. And so uh, I think it's slowly increasing. Um, and I think it'll sort of ramp up as we get into the holiday season even more. And so we'll see more. Uh, we're, we're not having our visitors on campus. Um, and we're, we're, we're sticking to that. I think that's important. You know, one of our um, big signature items is having our tours. Um, and it's just not the time to do that yet. Uh, there will be a time. Uh, that's a great opportunity for us to show our campus around and we want to do it um, the, the marketing and communications team under Carol Branson did a great job with a virtual tour. If you haven't seen that, you can see that on our website. Um, it's actually as, as more informative than if I took you around, uh, but you can actually see all of the spaces uh, on campus and that's open to the general public. Um, um, but there'll be a time when we, we get back in the saddle on that as well. I think it's slowly coming back. St. Augustine is slowly coming back. And I just heard today that Nights of Lights is going to even be earlier. So that's, that's going to happen, I think, in the middle of November. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know they were talking about Nights of Lights because that is a big event, not just for the city, but our students love it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We're getting yes. our lights ready already. I can <laughs> see them outside my window. <laughs> yes. uh, so, Mrs. Joyner, we'd love to hear from you. What is your role like with the college? Well, not as big as Joe's, that's no. for sure. But I think my number one role is just to be very supportive of Joe first and what's going on here at Flagler College. Um, we had both just retired um, from public education after uh, 38 years for me and 40 plus for Joe. And then this opportunity became available. And you know, we kind of put all our travel and all of those things aside and just looked at this as a wonderful opportunity with lots of discussion and lots of prayer and it just happened. And not only did we want to take the position, but we wanted to be very supportive. We wanted it to be a team effort. And so we moved, we moved to Valencia Street. I mean, we sold our house. We just it was like, whoa, what is happening? But things just took place. And so I, I really feel like, number one, I need to be supportive of Joe. Um, we've always been supportive of each other during our careers. And so that is, that is huge. I want to be his biggest cheerleader. And so I've been doing that. And then I know it's important for me to be involved with the students. Goodness, I was a classroom teacher for 38 years. So I love to be around the students and any parents that are listening, your students are riding by and walking by and skateboarding by and bicycling by with mask on, on Valencia Street. I mean, they are going above and beyond the call of duty. So that's my role. I really want to be involved and I am involved. In fact, I brought out my last year's calendar of October this time last year, and we were actually going to Tallahassee for an alumni event. And so I miss, I mean, my calendar was jam packed. And I thought, oh my gosh, sometimes I would be overwhelmed, but I can't wait for those days to come back. And I, I just, that's my, and a big part of my job is to be a good listener. And just to be a good listener to Joe and to the faculty and the staff and the students and the alumni and the trustees. And so when I see you, I can say to you, Tara, how's Zoe? How's fourth grade? <laughs> you know, when I see you guys, I can say, how's Cassie? And oh, she's learning online. Is she still working on the, at, at the Floridian? You know, those things and those connections are what make us a Flagler family. Right. And it's just so important. And I, I, 
yearn for those days again when we can catch up face to face. I mean, it's difficult and challenging with the mask, but it's even harder on a screen. And so it's just, it's, it's really, it's a, a very exciting role and I love it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, the world of education was not done with the two of you. So we just roped <laughs> you back in in a different way. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, in a good way. Uh, so you've touched upon, you know, some of your, the different ways that you connect with our students and families and alumni. Any favorite, you know, events or ways that really stay with your heart? Well, graduation is the last day of school when I taught every year broke my heart because I felt like I was saying goodbye to my family. And I never dreamed that I would get those same vibes at graduation from Flagler College. And I see so many students walk across that stage that I have seen perform in concerts and in theaters. And I've seen their pro seen them do presentations and programs. And I see them in the dining hall. And I see them walk by my house and they know our dog, Glory B. And it's like a part of us is leaving but then I look forward to seeing them again. I like to go to the alumni events. Um, I love when the carolers from Flagler College come to our house and Christmas carol. I love when they sing and have concerts in the rotunda. Um, there's, uh, there's just so many exciting things that happen at Flagler College. It has just been a lot of excitement and good things for our life. It has. Really oh, good. Well, I'd love to share this one comment that just came in. It says, Mrs. Joyner, thank you for those fun stories about the kids on campus. Makes me glad my son is at Flagler. Oh, thank I'm glad. You. Yes, yes. And, I, and I've shared this with other events um, and other, you know, parent sessions that we've had. You know, I am the mother, but I, I'm a mother of an eight-year-old, not an 18-year-old. Um, and so I have no idea what that decision was like, you know, for families and, and parents of students, but um, what gave me such ease sending my eight year old to school was that their teacher said to me, I'm here to take care of your kid. And I thought, well, that's my role here at Flagler is I am right. to now take care of your kids who I call students, but they are your kids at heart. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, well, let's go ahead and transition over to Mr. and Mrs. Picard. Um, I'd love to ask you all, let's just start. What was the adjustment like sending your student to Flagler? So you go ahead. Um, it was much easier than sending off our firstborn. <laughs> there is some one obviously I'm very pro flagler and I've benefited immensely since I graduated you know 5,000 years ago but um, what you were just talking about Tara of that comfort level where our older daughter is is fine it's a great school it's not flagler and she went there because flagler didn't have what she needed for her sports it's fine she's a nice skater it's not gonna happen in Florida um, <laughs> knowing that we were sending our baby to the place mm -hmm. where I, I, I know that Dr. Joyner and his wife have slept on the floor during hurricanes with students. Mm -hmm. I know that if there was something going wrong in St. Augustine, that would be their first and only priority. It wouldn't matter what was happening with them. It wouldn't matter, you know, I, my heart broke when um, Dr. Joyner was showing some of the videos of one of the floods and I can't remember which hurricane it was because we seem to get smacked there year after year. Um, and. The, the care that both of you have is so evident and comes through, even if it is a screen. I know screens aren't ideal, but it does come through on the screens. And, and Dr. Joyner, your over-communication for a worried parent, we're 11 hours away, right? We're not gonna be able to go pick her up real quick. Um, it, it, I, I know darn well, if there was an issue, she was at the ER, you all would go. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. that kind of uh, reassurance is amazing. So Bill, I'm sorry, I talked too much, honey. No, you, you nailed it. Um, you know, uh, Lisa's right. Our, our older daughter goes to a wonderful school, great campus, great community. Um, but the, the family feel, I, in fact, when I, when I recorded my message uh, for the PLC meeting uh, at uh, uh, move-in day, I talked, I, I, the first thing I said to everybody was, welcome to the Flagler family, because I remember it being said to me, and it struck me. 
it, it, you know, so there's a question about, you know, what's your favorite quote? That's mine. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. That's my favorite quote because it really does capture uh, what Flagler is all about. And, and Dr. Joyner and Susan, you have done so much in, in keeping that and, and driving that feeling. And I, I can't thank you enough as a, as a parent. Well, thank you. We can't thank you enough for all you do, both of you. And sharing your daughter, that's the best gift right. of all. Well, thank you. I know. I mean, it's, it, it's such a hard transition for our families when it's a first-year student. And I think that only became more heightened with what we're going through. And then I think every single family was feeling the heightened sense of, oh my goodness, now what do I do? Um, and, the, and the regular communication, I think, really went the extra, the extra mile. So I know that your daughter is doing virtual learning with us this semester, but could did, you yeah. talk with us maybe about how you're, how you're still staying connected with her through that virtual learning? And then I would love to hear how you stayed connected with her when she was actually physically here. Well, I'll start. So, um, you know, so she, of course, uh, she finished last semester uh, virtually after, after, what was it, after spring break. Right. Um, and that was a tough adjustment for all of us, uh, for her especially. Um, online learning was just a, was a bit of a jolt. Um, this semester, um, the biggest adjustment is that she seems to think that our kitchen table is the best place for her to learn from when she's, <laughs> when she's home. And it's close to the snacks, right? <laughs> well, but it's an open kitchen with a family room, and so I can't mm -hmm. watch hockey or whatever was on on my big plasma, so I'm in the basement, but it's okay. Um, I know that she's actively staying in touch with friends uh, from school, whether they're there now or, or also during, doing virtual. Um, and I'd say my other biggest adjustment has been um, when she's not working at the kitchen table, she likes to do her, her, a lot of her work out at the horse barn where she boards her horse and, and works part time. And at first I, I, I was, I was not uh, on board with this. Uh, you know, I was like, no, I want you to do, you know, you need to do your homework at home, not at the barn. And she said to me, she said, dad, this is where I feel engaged and at work, just like you don't like working from home and you go to the office since you got it to yourself. And I realized, oh, wow, <laughs> well, I, I've got to relax a little and understand just like, yeah, I prefer to be in the office setting. She needs to be in her setting. And um, sometimes it means she's doing her homework in a stall next to uh, uh, a young foal. But uh, yeah. that is cool. It's good you got Wi-Fi in your barn. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I think that shows though the flexibility of Flagler and you know as our kids were coming through high school and, and things like that you know when everyone starts the the conversation of, of where are you going to go to college um I never wanted a big school for my kids um ever because when I went to Flagler I had some pretty cool opportunities that because my advisor um Dr. Dillon at the time uh, worked it out for me I was able to use an internship at the White House back in the day as credit and had I not been able to do that, I wouldn't have been able to go. Um, I wouldn't have been made the connections that I've had now. I mean, it really set me on the path that I, that I do now. I still work in DC. Um, and so when COVID hit, I had complete faith that Flagler could figure it out. Um, and, and our daughter stayed home this semester for a whole host of reasons, but none of them were because we thought she would be unsafe. She was supposed to be traveling abroad this semester. You know, that obviously didn't work. Stuff was happening with her horse. There was just a whole bunch of things that made it better for her to be home this semester. I'm not sure she fully um, is still happy with that decision because she really misses people. And I know she cannot wait to go back. Um, but I've been very impressed with the way professors are still reaching out to her because I know at least in one of her classes, um, she's the only virtual student and she's taken some tough things. I mean, one of her classes is aquatic chemistry and then something else is she's asking me questions that I have no idea what the heck they are. Um, but she's still got such an engagement and a connection with these professors, even though they are 11 hours away and it's all on zoom. So to me that underlines, all the strengths of Flagler College and, and really what makes it special and, and a phenomenal educational experience for all of the kids there, not just necessarily those in the same major. Well, and I think that's a huge testament to her as a coastal environmental science major. You're thinking, okay, she needs to be closer to the water versus closer to a horse, but she's adapted and, and she's worked it to where she's still learning and taking an aquatics <laughs> class 
Well, um, and, she, and she's talking with, uh, you know, working for her capstone for next year about what is the option as far as um, looking at environmental impacts regarding rain and water, not necessarily in the in the bay there at Matanzas or whatever, but, you know, kind of looking as a bigger scope as to what she can do, because you might not be right on the coast. I mean, we're in Virginia, so we're not right at the beach, but we're certainly not in Nebraska and, and how everything is, is connected and inter, and interactive. Um, and Bill and I were talking a couple of months ago and we have just said, we have seen such a change and such a, I don't want to say a maturation because, you know, she's still 20, but, such a phenomenal impact that having these relationships with these professors um, really yeah. in, has inspired her. And, and you just don't get that in other, in other facilities, other, other kind of universities. Yeah. So something we hear a lot from parents or that I know uh, my own area, we really try to work with our parents on is what, what did you, or do you find most helpful in supporting your student, whether they're at the same kitchen table as you, or whether they're 11 hours away? Well, shoot, uh, I think Lisa summed a lot of it up. Uh, the, the fact that the, the professors have been, I don't want to just say accommodating, but, but thinking forward on how to make it work, uh, that, that's been key. Um, yeah, Cass has some amazing relationships with her professors from when she was on site, and, and maybe that's a part of what's helping her now. Um, but uh, in, uh, as far as supporting the student in, for us doing it virtually, has been the willingness of, of the professors. Again, like Lisa said, one class, Cassie is the only person virtual, um, but the professor has done a wonderful job in making sure that Cassie isn't left out or left behind or feeling alienated. Um, and I, I, I think that's been a key factor in, in helping her, uh, as I mentioned earlier, last semester finishing it virtually was very hard on her. This has not been as hard on her and, and, she's, uh, and she's thriving. Oh, well, I'd like to take a minute just to pull some new quotes and comments that we've been getting. They're warming my heart, and it's like a wonderful end <laughs> to the week. Um, but we have one member who has said, my daughter dreamed of attending Flagler since she was eight years old, following a family vacation to the area. When she arrived on campus this summer and we said goodbye, we left knowing she was home. Flagler has continued to exceed her expectations, which puts us, meaning the family who's in North Carolina, at ease. Our gratitude for making this time of great change and uncertainty so smooth and positive for our daughter and in turn the entire family. Um, you know, Bill, we have another attendee who said, you know, you put it perfectly about the kids from spring semester having a hard adjustment because it was an adjustment for parents as well. Um, she, I cried. I cried several times. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I cried even with like second grade math. <laughs> Uh, but she, you know, mentions Flagler strengths are also the students who need support services like their own son, who's also a coastal environmental science major. Um, and so I, I see the comment in here, um, please definitely have your son reach out to us. It allows for them to kind of take that ownership and, and really kind of take the reins on some things. Um, I totally agree with all this sentiment, the engagement and compassion of the professors is unique. Um, as a current student, the familiar environment is tangible through the screen. I love that quote. We're going to plaster that all over the place. Yep, that's great. <laughs> and it is a culture that permeates throughout the campus. Um, and so we do appreciate that. Um, it looks like another student here as a history major. I was initially apprehensive about completing my senior year online. But in summer A, I took an Irish history class with Dr. Butler, and it was the most engaging and incredibly uh, incredible history class I've ever taken. Point being, even though it was through Zoom, it is my favorite class I've ever taken. Um, and she definitely attributes her experience a lot to um, Dr. Howell as well. So thank you so much for all of those wonderful, you know, comments and how they're really reinforcing what, what you all are doing. Um, and so I did see a comment that came through chat. Um, and so I'm glad that this person also brought it up. But um, what last recommendations would you all have? Or maybe like a little pearl of wisdom that you could offer to our families and students. Uh, Mrs. Joyner, why don't we start with you? I'm going to put you in the hot seat. I just think trust is so important. That you trust that the people here at this school are making the best decisions because the bottom line in anything that happens here, what 
always goes through everybody who's making those decisions minds is how is it going to impact the students here. So I really think trust is huge for parents and for the students just to always know that every decision that is made is made for in your best interest. So trust is huge for me. Dr. Joyner? I, I, think, um, I think right now parents really need to be that strong anchor. I, I, I really, you know, typically we, we say give them space, don't, you know, over communicate, don't, don't text them every five minutes. <laughs> Um, that's typically, you know, they, they, it's time to grow up. It's time to, to for them to, to be on their own. Um, but this, it, when you think back about what these students have gone through this summer, and it's not just COVID, it's everything that's happening right now in the world. And so they really need that anchor and that the, the number one anchor is always you. Um, is always a parent. And so be there for them. They need that sense of normalcy in that uh, insecurity, you know, that, that my parents are there, they're there for me. And, and uh, I, I think, you know, showing some empathy about, you know, their experience here, because it is very different. It's hard in a normal time to go away and it's even harder now, you know, and, you know, some of the things that we, we've done here on campus, um, um, is that the students are desperate for, for engagement. You know, students this age always are. They want to communicate, they want to talk, they want to get involved, they want to communicate with their friends. And so uh, we want to try to do more of that. And I think if you can encourage them to get more engaged, we say that every year, but it's even more important now to, um, to, to really have that anchor here on our campus. Uh, yesterday, I was in between meetings and we had a Young lady, she, her cat, her little kitty got lost in the ponds. So it's somewhere, somewhere in this building. <laughs> and so uh, I, I stopped what I was doing and the maintenance staff and we spent some time trying to look uh, behind every nook and cranny here, which is an interesting place. You know, <laughs> building built in 1888, there's lots of nooks and crannies. And so, um, I have to follow up today and see if they found it. I think it did come back, but you know, it's just things like that where I, I think you can sort of um, engage with the students and be empathetic about what they're going through and sort of be that anchor for them during a difficult time. I think it really opened our eyes last week at, Flat, at Founders Day because you know it was our first official event and a student designed the t-shirts and on the back it said, my wish for 2020 and they gave them markers and as I was passing them out asking them their size and passing them out we were asking them and they were so ready to share what their wish was before they wrote it on their t-shirt but over and over we heard keep the campus open yeah that was their biggest wish open keep, the swimming pool open the swimming pool <laughs> <laughs> priorities <laughs> but, but it just they want to be here but they wanted to interact with us they really wanted to share their wish and I thought that was so encouraging I walked away feeling so full of hope so that was a good thing yeah I think the students are definitely you know I, again I just keep thinking about the opportunity to come and grab something from an office you know it's yeah. It's, I think, those little things that are going really far. You know, the other day we had, we had ordered a big lion head with a paint by number kit. And in 22 minutes, we handed out 50 of them to students. Wow, that's great. Um, you know, they, the other craft idea was a little Zen garden from like a little like tin. And the students were posting their pictures on social media oh, and then interacting with one another through that. And so the interaction looks a little bit different and the idea of connecting to campus looks a little bit different, but I agree. It, it's what's definitely making yeah. making the impact. And so Lisa, would you mind sharing any of your thoughts? Sure, sure. I would just, I guess say, um, family doesn't end the day you graduate. And um, I wanna put a plug in here for being an active alum. Um, I was lucky enough to be on the alumni board for six years. You don't have to necessarily do that, but it's really important you keep your connection. Um, obviously you'll get a few emails looking for support in various ways. But that's not really, the, the, to me, the key to it. 
um, when you're leaving school and you're trying to figure out what the next chapter in your life is and you're not even sure where to go or where to start, knowing that, you know, if you are moving to a certain area that you can just shoot out an email and say, hey, are there any Flagler alums? I'd really like to go have a coffee. Um, you know, again, DC is pretty far away. We have a huge thriving uh, alumni group here. Um, and it's great because the joiners always come. We always have our event in the fall and that's fantastic. But even just the folks coming up for an internship or the folks coming up for, you know, they've, they've moved to the big city and, you know, they don't even have an idea to where to start looking for an apartment. Those kind of connections to me make Flagler so much more special than any other quote unquote average school. Um, I, I think Flagler goes above and beyond and what it offers its alums and just don't, don't give that up because that's oh, no. a whole amazing thing that's available to you. Hey, but Lisa, yeah. your connections with Flagler College, remember, oh. okay, you said White House, just as a little sidebar, tell everybody what you do um, at so, the White House, which is- So huge. I am a lobbyist, I'm a lobbyist for farmers, and one of our things is every year we give the White House, we present the Thanksgiving turkey to the White House. Yeah, um, that's about, so awesome. I love that story. <laughs> years, I think it was about 10 years ago. I was literally waiting for the event to start and I was hanging out in, I think it's in the green room of the White House and I found a picture or a painting that Henry Flagler's daughter donated. And so I had to take a picture and send it to everybody at Flagler. Like, uh, do we know this is in here? <laughs> oh my that's great. Goodness. That's oh, like six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love it. Bill, anything else? I know you shared kind of your favorite quote earlier, but I'd love to hear some more. Well, uh, what Lisa didn't share, though, is there have been times when the turkeys have had to uh, spend some time quarantined, if you will, in her office. Uh, so that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before they're at the White House. But anyway, um, you know, it, as far as pearls of wisdom or whatever, what I would suggest to everybody, especially in this time with COVID, um, is to make sure that you're not afraid to ask questions and ask for help. Um, the, the, the Parents Leadership Council endeavors to call and or email all of the parents of incoming freshmen. So I have the opportunity to speak to or email with 25 or more parents. And one, one parent I spoke to, uh, her son got quarantined um, but then really then was found to not be, to not have it and then let out it. And there was a lot of confusion. And at the end of the day though, she had asked enough questions and he asked enough questions and they got, they got it taken care of and, and he's fine and, and, and that's fantastic. Um, but the support is there. The work was put in end of last year and especially over the summer to do everything in, mm -hmm. in your all's power to make this a safe semester. Um, so my, my, my thought is make sure you ask questions uh, because the help is there if you need it. Great comment. Really, yeah. <clears throat> and I would like to wrap up those recommendations with just asking questions of your student and just talking to them. You know, as a parent myself, I'll say, how was your day, Zoe? And she'll be like, fine. And I get nothing. <laughs> and I'm sure you experience that as well as families. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a minute, who'd you eat lunch with? And then they start talking or what was your favorite part um, of today or what project are you working on or maybe even ask them what's frustrating them because then all of a sudden it, it can create some good dialogue and you're finding out more and then you're all able to ask questions together. Well, thank you so much to the four of you for joining us today and for everybody else that's joined us virtually. Um, we are honored that you've taken some time during your lunch break to hear from us or if you're watching this another time. Um, that you did take some time out of your day to connect back with us. Tara, uh, may I say one more thing real quick? Yeah. Everybody on the call, we have at 3.30 uh, a call with the Parents Leadership Council. We'd love everyone to come and join us and listen in or join in and uh, maybe join the ranks, get involved. You get a fancy red shirt and uh, <laughs> we'd love to have everyone involved. Yes, absolutely. And on our website is where the link is for the Parents Leadership Council. That's at 3.30. We also have tonight an open mic that's being sponsored by our Department of English. Tomorrow's sessions will begin with our dining services, and then we'll also chat with um, our Center for Advising and Core Experience and then Advising 101, because I think your students are starting to understand it, but it doesn't necessarily translate to families. And so hear it from them, what that whole process looks like from mm -hmm. start to finish. We'll also hear from health services and counseling just on overall wellness for your students. 
um, a virtual boat tour of St. Augustine is going to happen at oh. 6 p.m. with one of our faculty members. And so we did get to do that in person last year, and it was such a hit that That's we're going to see what happens when we take it virtually. And then a family favorite and a Flagler favorite trivia is tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. And so again, all those links are on our website. Thank you all again so much for joining us and we wish you all continued health and safety. So have a wonderful Friday afternoon. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you Tara. Thank you. Great to see you.